We also got access to plenty of hardwood from these ancient northern forests. Now we'll turn on the yields here, you can see it looks like a gray brick, kind of. So we're not going to have any problems with military shipbuilding if we'd like to do that. Because we're going to have tons of lumber. Uh, this is one reason not to automate your ships. So my ship came back from Europe. Had I not automated him, I would have been able to give him a promotion. The Navigation 1, Navigation 2. So he would have been able to get to Red Fox Bay faster. But it's not that big a deal, really. Actually, what I'll do is I'll make him not move. And then I'll make the lumberjack get off the ship. The native trader can stay on the ship. And what we can do now is we can pull. We can pull in this trader as a native trader and put him on the ship. Wait, why did you stop moving right there, friend? Oh, you got the movement points because I gave you the promotion. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad it works like that. Alright, so we'll head over to the villages down here to establish trading posts. Actually, you know, I want to go to this village and this village over here. We need to think that, we need to remember that trading posts make treasures, but still have to tra travel a certain distance. So we'll head on down to the southwest. We have safe at last because we got our first chevaux de free. So there you go. We're going to swap the Siberian Lumberjack into being a regular colonist, and then we're going to pull the indentured servant out as a scout, and put the Lumberjack in to produce plenty of lumber. And then our indentured servant shall head on down to a, a heart, sir? However you say that. Alright, let's get some goodies up here. Oh, we have the Kondiaronk. Not the Kondiaronk, but this is Kondiaronk of the Huron. I want to grab the burial grounds and the ancient ruins before we talk to them, though. Double unit experience, very nice. Hello there, Huron. They are patriarch forest warriors raiders, so they might actually fight us more if we come up here. Oh, there's an alligator right here. Might be a little unsafe for the native trader, but you know what? That's too bad. Get off my ship. He's got plus 75% defense there anyway, so the alligator should lose that fight. It's not like the alligator has any bonuses for being an alligator, after all. This is not Realism Invictus, where the animals have different strengths based on the terrain they're in. Alright, let's establish that trading post. Very, very happy with that. So now we have two trading posts, which is more than I've ever had in any We The People game at this point in time during a playthrough. And these guys, don't they have more money from trading posts, right? So we have even more incentive to work with them. We got 744 gold. I think I'm not going to spend it. I'm going to keep that on hand just in case some kind of event comes up. I think I need a thousand gold for most of the events though. And hopefully this dude lives. Hey, hey, he made it. I don't want to go through the goody huts as this guy because he might get himself killed. So we're not going to do that. And we're not going to go through the defensive terrain here like we normally would in the game because it costs too much movement. You know, I'm not entirely certain how these dudes are expert sugar planters. They have some savanna here that they could learn from. But there's no actual sugar truly available. So how did y'all figure that out? I'm joking. I'm sure that it's just like some small cultivations that they have running somewhere. Let's actually enter trade negotiations with a fog knack and maybe bring back some more fur. Sounds like a great idea to me. Yes, sir. I'll take that one gold each to... Pentuple my money, and then we'll head back and pick pick up some coffee berries. All right, promotions for the season scout. We're gonna go with veteran one into forced march one for another minus one terrain movement cost and a visibility range, and then we're gonna go have a chat with the Huron. Only two hundred five gold. Too bad. Expert hunters. Alrighty, and another cute little saying or piece of fluff. Man, we can move into a movement cost 3 tile as if it costs 1 movement. That's pretty impressive. There's a lot of cold, cold taiga up here. No, this is actual tundra, it's not even taiga. Taiga produces 3 food, 4, I think that is flax, and 4 of the canola. I'm gonna call it canola. It's called something else in the mod, because it's historically accurate. But it's probably not a good, a good name to continue using. Flax you can turn into rope and sailcloth, I believe. I think it's flax or hemp. And then tundra only does, if it's by itself, like one food, a little bit of ore and one fur. You really don't want to 
subtle tundra if you don't have to. It looks like we might have to though. Well, we don't have to. We have plenty of land up here to the north. We could settle all the taiga and then stop up there and then also settle down here and have a pretty massive colony. Our czar is offering to sell us some criminals. I'm not interested. Not interested. I need that money for something else. We're going to keep exploring. Oh, we found another native village up here in the north. But yeah, this guy's going to keep going north for quite a while. We're going to find out where the ice is at. 997 gold from this village. Not bad, not bad. Oh, we have found the tip of the continent. There is ice up here. Lots and lots of ice, actually. And our first proper treasure unit, surprisingly enough. That took a long time. This guy can get killed by that barbarian lynx, though. He might actually get caught right here, but it would be across the river, thankfully. Ooh, these guys are expert coffee planters. They need colored wool cloth. Only 186 gold. We're getting really, really unlucky. Wow, dude, we have three expert hunter villages here. One, two, three. Wow. Them's aren't great odds. All right, let's see here. So I don't want to send the indentured servant into a burial grounds that might, you know, upset the entire nation of the crow. I'm not sure if that is still a possibility on the ancient ruins. But I think I'm going to risk him taking some damage and some hit point loss. He shouldn't die, I don't think. I don't think you can... I don't know. Like, I've had people die pretty often. We got some treasure. Awesome. You're very lucky, sir. Now let's establish that trading post with the crow right here. So now we have three trading posts with them. They feel at plus two. They should be at plus three on the next turn. Let's not sell our goods quite yet. We might be getting asked for money here. Alright, we are not. Let's double check that these are... No, they're still only at plus two. That's too bad. We'll just have to trade with them a little bit more. Maybe we could actually, like, try to establish a defensive pack with them. And be like, hey, you know, we're going to get along. Or do we take their land? Which one is it going to be? I don't think their villages are in, like, terrible locations overall. I really don't want to settle this wetland here if I can help it. Although there is silver right here. There's not a lot of silver, but there's some silver. And I think we settle the cotton right here. And then one, two, three. That cotton does stop any kind of settlement along the bay right here. Any settlement anywhere on the bay. I, oh, it almost stops it. I had to settle like really far in here. And then I could settle up here at the top. I'm going to take a moment to sort out what I want to do. Yeah, I think we're going to have to settle on the squash right here. This is because I want the pearls no matter what. Gems are very, very pricey. They're as pricey as silver. Well, they're more pricey. Silver sells for 19. Gems sell for 23. Gems are absolutely wonderful things to have. Dwarves would also agree. One of these days, I'm going to do a playthrough of Dwarf Fortress for fun as well. Red Fox Bay's position is a little bit annoying because I would have preferred it to settle one south of the squash if I had to settle there. And then I could have moved Red Fox Bay down by one, but then that would have gotten into... That would have interfered with anything on this side right here. So I would not be able to settle anything right here. I'd have to settle west somewhere. And then I'd have to settle... I'd really want to settle somewhere with access to the cotton. So it would be like, once again, required for us to set up another settlement right here. Just next to the iron. But then we'd be behind yet another shallow coast. Which we're behind up here. I don't want to be, but that's... There's no other way to get, to get the pearls, you know? I should have checked. Ugh. I gotta remember that it's hard to see these things. Like, they're there. You can see these, like, pinkish bits right here. Those are the reefs. But it's, it's hard to notice. Alright, I think I got my two future settlement sites that I want. We don't have to buy any crow land in order to get those locations. Correct? Yes, not a single drop of crow land. This settlement will also have access to lots and lots of fur, including premium fur, actually. Anyway, let's go back to Europe. Let's sell off our goods here real quick. We have 1,643 gold. I want to start settling some more colonies like yesterday. I want this colony up here getting started ASAP, but I do also need to make more money. Is, is two scouts enough? Should I go for a third scout? I think on a gigantic map it makes sense. Because we could settle these locations, but they won't 
really bring us gold immediately, especially not to the northern location, which we had to build up first in order to reach the pearls. That's more of a long-term thing, but so is the location down here, the cotton location. Maybe we do settle behind another shallow coast right here, because we do have access to a little bit of silver from the mineral resources right here. And checking Europe, we do have an expert prospector that's available. I don't think there's really anything else that he could do that I can see at the moment. So let's say that we settled right here with the prospector. So we grab the prospector make him a settler. That should be pretty cheap because we have so many bonuses. And then one, two, three. The closest that we could go would be right here in the savannah to grab the beehives. So that would be settled there. But that does not have access to fresh water, which is too bad, but it is what it is. It's coastal. It has access to actual coast. Although pretty often there's like fog and stuff somewhere in here. This colony would also have access to some beavers, which would be premium fur. We're probably going to end up crashing the price of coats and luxury coats. Oh, some indigo too, to make indigo in addition to the cotton to make colored wool. Well, colored cloth, wonderful. We do have to buy some land from these dudes. So anyway, that answers what I want to do next. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to grab the expert prospector. Make him a settler. Only 608 gold. You might think that's a lot, but that's not a lot. That is not a lot at this speed. We'll get him on the boat, and then we can do something else as well. We have 945 gold. I might like to get an expert fisherman, because our borders should be expanding here pretty shortly. Yep, one turn, and then we're going to need more food to supply more colonists here. The second colony down here, actually, maybe we want to, we do need to buy some land from the crow. That's true. Let's not buy anything. Let's just send this back as is, and then set up that second colony. Make sure that we have the money to pay. I don't want to make the crow upset if we don't have to. We've been challenged to trade more coffee berries than any other colony first. 3,000 coffee berries. Might happen, might not. We'll see. I kind of doubt we'll do the raw coffee berries simply because I prefer to sell the good stuff. The processed stuff. Alright, looks like we have a pretty big large river in the middle of the continent that leads into a freshwater lake that's pretty massive. Well, not pretty massive. It's, it's a good size. I've seen much, much larger lakes, but this is a decent size. There's lots and lots of food that could be made from rivers like this. Assuming it is in the right position, though, I don't think that we could build a pier along the river. Maybe if it were on the lake. I don't think you can build piers if you're on a lake. I think you need an actual coastline. Hey, 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 we got a seasoned scout now. These guys also train expert miner, which is thankfully not expert hunter. They also need colored claw. That's too bad. And a little bit of advice for them. So now that we're a seasoned scout, I don't feel bad going into a burial mound because we just got some experience. Awesome. We got the A Well-Traveled Man story. This is because we have two seasoned scouts. And the church is asking us to donate 331 gold to the cause. I think this is pretty much always a good idea. You often get like missionaries or sometimes you even get like an archbishop, which is a really powerful firebrand preacher. I think it's called an archbishop. It might be called different things for different types of religions. Like us Russians, we have Orthodox priests. And we did indeed get a Orthodox missionary. This guy, I'd like to send him over to Kaposia. They do have five population. I'm not sure if population impacts how fast you get, like, converts. I think it does impact how fast you get money from treasure, from uh, trading posts, though. A, an actual expert trapper village, not super, super far away. We could consider going there to learn this skill. You cannot get it anywhere in... it's not in Europe. I don't think you can get it from Africa. You might be able to get it from Port Royal. You can get, uh, I think, most of the harvesting skills that can be trained by natives in Port Royal. It just costs a lot of money. A lot of money. We have religious salvation for the natives. I think this is because we have a orthodox missionary. Hmm. You know, if we settle here, in order to reach the clams, I would have to settle on the pigs. Would that be a bad thing to do? I could push a little more aggressively into the crow, settle right here. 
but then it would probably be super expensive to buy their land. And we don't have the bonus of fresh water, so we'd be at zero health because we'd have minus two from unhealthy terrain and plus two from coastal. So I don't want to do that because then we couldn't we couldn't add anybody. It would be Mother of Pearl all over again. We'd have to wait until we get like a doctor there. We could add maybe one person. But I mean Mother of Pearl did develop eventually. It just took a while. If I settle there, that means that I cannot settle on the pigs. I'd have to settle one over right here. And that would give us fish, deer, pigs, furs eventually. Moving one over does give us access to the cotton sooner rather than later, as well as more food from the clams. And I don't want to settle on the pigs to get the clams, and I don't want to I don't want to lose the clams either. I think we do, I think we do, I think we settle one east and then we also go ahead and then we settle just passing through for the moment. We settle on river maybe or off one. Oh, these are what the hell man, why are both of these shallow coasts? What is up with that? I think we settle off river here because this is all shallow coast except right here and we really need access to proper ocean. I'm gonna have the caravel wait a turn in a fog knock to see if we have any money left over to buy their goods. Although realistically we probably will because it's only 23 fairs. Let's let's go ahead and let's take it. And then how many berries do we have left in uh, available I mean? We have 30. That's good enough for me. Let's come back and pick that up on the way back to Europe and hopefully we'll have enough money to buy the land right here. It's a pretty aggressive settle and it'll probably push our relationship but if we can keep getting more missions and trading posts we should be okay. The scout I'm gonna have him go I think east from here. Now it would be a smart idea in the old movement system to end my turn on the mountain but here it takes five movement points to go onto the mountain. So that five would be taken from us one way or another. So we're not going to do that. We got another promotion for our northern scout. He's going to get force march two for plus one movement range. So now he is a ultra scout and he can find pretty much anything anywhere. All right, let's see how much money this is going to be. 1,176, quite a bit. Let's buy it. This is yet another silly little city to set up that we need to get a medical office in before we can do anything with it, but hey, whatever. We have access to silver. That's all that this town exists to do for the moment. We will develop it naturally. But what are we going to name it? Well, it's at the mouth of a bay. Let's call this one Boggy Bay. I think we're going to rename Red Fox Bay to be just Red Fox. Here, we're going to build a village hall before we build anything else because we need to build a medical office immediately after that. The prospector better be doing his job. He is, oh my goodness, six silver from a yield that used to be just one silver. That's awesome. And I am going to turn off citizen automation in my colonies just now because Clan Hawkins actually showed me what that button was. I, did, I don't always inspect all the buttons, to be honest. I should. That's how you learn the game a lot better, but I've gotten most of it down. Hurrying production is something I didn't do before. I probably still won't do a whole lot, but I can see some situations where it makes sense. Hey, hey, we got ourselves a buccaneer. And he's not super far away from our colony here. We still don't have a defender and it's 1525 AD. That is pretty painful. It's going to take this buccaneer 18 turns to get back to Red Fox. If we go straight there, which we can't do because we're going to get killed by the natives if we, if we attempt that. So that's just an example, and that's to move 10 tiles. To move 10 tiles, it takes 18 turns for this dude in this kind of dense terrain. I really, really want to see if there's like a big impact on AI development by playing on normal speed with this kind of movement system. You would think that there would be something, right? I am going to have to take a break though in a second. Let's rename Red Fox real quick. You're no longer a bay, sir. You're just Red Fox. But yeah, my, my wife will be home pretty soon, so I'll be back in just a moment. Oh, before I leave, real quick, y'all, um, tell me if you prefer, like, the encapsulated episode format where you have, like, a beginning and then an ending. Like, maybe I can try doing that somehow. I'm still not sure about, like, editing things. Right now, editing, I just, I speak, and as I speak, I cut what's in between that, so I compress it, basically. And then I have it, like, it's... The playthroughs are designed to be watched as if you're binge watching it basically. 
but I could have like explanations around the beginning and explanations near the end or something like that. I don't know. Y'all let me know some ideas. All right, I'll be back in a moment. All right, I am ready to get back at it. We have extended journey. I'm not sure exactly what causes this. I think it's just having a second colony. We also have the Buccaneers story right here. And we got the Fur Trader house done in Red Fox. After that, we need to consider what to do. I do think that we need to make more central buildings. We need more population as well. So we need to do something like make the market and then make the tavern. So that is exactly what we shall do. His Majesty offers to give us the supplies to build a wagon train or the supplies to make a town guard. I would rather take the wagon train to be honest. And now we have our orthodox missionary here. I think we're going to go ahead and found this mission. We could build a mission improvement. I think it always oh, it called a, I think it's called a monastery actually. We could build a monastery improvement and then have the missionary work in the monastery and we could recruit people in that way. But I'm not sure if the trait for this particular native applies that multiplier to the rate at which you get natives through that manner. So we'll just form a regular mission here. Or hopefully, assuming that we did not fail. And we did not, thankfully. We've met Sitting Bull of the Sioux, a little to the northwest of our main landing area. Let's have a chat and see what's going on. He is the canola seed planter. He teaches those, I mean. They need gunpowder. We're not going to sell that to him right now. And we got a mercenary, I believe. Yep, a native mercenary right here. Wonderful. I'm very happy to finally have a defender that I can send back to Red Fox. Of course, it is going to take 17 turns. Goodness. Well, we just got the native gold quest. We also have the Mad Hatter. I think this has something to do with the, I guess, the fur trader house. Gonna offload some furs and some coffee berries. That leaves us with 606 gold. Not very much. But we can get some new immigrants at least. And we do need to grab some new immigrants. I'll take the olive picker, probably clear her specialty. And then maybe the master powder maker and keep his specialty. Because I don't want to lose any of these people really. They're quite useful. So let's take the powder maker now. Well, let's see what the options are for equipment at the moment. Nothing. All right. So we shall take the powder maker. Oh, uh, expert master carpenter. Never mind. Get off my boat. Master carpenter, get on my boat. Powder maker can wait. We are probably going to clear this specialty and have her do something more useful. The crow village down in the east teaches expert indigo planting, which is actually good. We do want that, but man, we've been getting really, really unlucky on the gold from the native villages. The Huron offered to sell us some warriors for 1600 gold, but we do not have that. We don't even have half that, so we can't even take a potential relationship hit to buy them. And we just got our first treasure from Kaposia. Our a master carpenter has arrived. He gets off the boat. He gets to work. Now, I can have the lumberjack lumberjack somewhere else so that the hunter can do his job right here. Actually, he, he would be better served doing his job somewhere else, wouldn't he? Like up here, actually. Okay. We'll do your lumber there temporarily. We do want to do fur trapping eventually, though. Now, we do have the expert olive picker. I'm not sure where olives are found. I need to check. So, olives grow on hills on plains terrain. Pretty deep within the interior, there are a few plains hills. Actually, no. There aren't any. There's a coal plains hill, but we're going to use that for coal if we ever get to this point. Yeah, I don't really see... There's one here. I don't see very many, so I don't think expert olive planting is something that we need. So you're going to learn to do something more useful. That something useful, what shall it be? You know, straight up just building things faster would be pretty good. But I'm also leaning towards generating crosses to get more immigration. Because our immigration right now is pretty poor. And if we had this citizen work in the church, he would produce two crosses. And right now it's 13 crosses for a person. I'd say it's like 13, 14 ish gold per cross right now. So that means that they would produce about 28 gold per turn by being a preacher. 
Alternatively, I could have them make coats. Now coats would make, well, they would convert 15 gold into 30 gold. So that would be a net 15 gold per turn. So that is less valuable than being a preacher. I quite like the idea of him being a preacher and naturally becoming a firebrand. I think that makes sense because we just, we just, we need more bodies, basically. We can settle new colonies really easily. We have access to some gold from exploration, but we've been getting really screwed over, actually. But we really just need more people. I was also considering making him do ranching so that we can grow our horse supply that we just got from that event. And that really would also save us a lot of money too because otherwise we'd have to buy some horses but i think we can save that for later right now more crosses means more people quite a bit faster as you can see so let's just go with that maybe we can have this free colonist right here do some ranching or something of course we're gonna need a defender before that freaking native mercenary can even get back i bet yeah he's at 18 turns right now so i'll probably have to get enough gold to buy a soldier this start has not been very strong, that is for sure. Hopefully the silver will start to help us out a lot more though. We're actually making 6 per turn, so it sells for 19. That means that we get 114 gold per turn from this dude. Just from mining silver and this mineral resource. That tile naturally has only one silver. That's really impressive. I think what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go pick up the silver in Boggy Bay and then trade for furs with the natives on the way back to Europe, basically. Yet another village that teaches expert hunter and needs colored cloth. You know, maybe if I save up enough money now with the number of treasures that I have, I can buy a galleon. I think I might do that. Try to save up some cash over the next couple turns and get the half price galleon event from the king. And there are the Shoshone just south of the Crow along the eastern coastline. We'll probably never interact with these guys, but we might one day. Ah yes, and in Boggy Bay, do I want peat or ore? I think I want ore. We could go with peat if we had access to more clay for pottery production, but I still, I never did pottery. I just never did it. This ancient treasure that I found, if I scroll all the way over and path to our main colony, it's going to take 31 turns to get there. In the original remake of Colonization, you had 300 turns to win the game before they fixed it and added more turns once you declared independence. So it would take 10% of the game to reach Red Fox. It's just how long it takes because of the new movement system. So this is kind of what I was thinking about is exploration is so much less powerful simply by virtue of being unable to move rapidly with units that only have one movement point. Before, if you had one movement point, it didn't matter how much terrain was in front of you. You could just move one tile every turn, but now you can't do it. You actually need to be a little bit capable or to have access to roads, ships, or if we put this in the actual civilization like aircraft or something. Like you need transport. It makes sense. Unless you got the right training, of course. We have the event for having five treasures. So if we can get enough gold on hand, we can definitely get a galleon. We really need them. And ooh, Jean de Brebeuf has offered to join our cause. Will we welcome him as part of our Continental Congress? It gives us an orthodox missionary. Natives are more tolerant towards territory encroachment. We spend less time living among the natives to learn a skill, and we strengthen relations with them. I think that we definitely will take that. So this orthodox missionary, we want to give him a ride over to... Probably Ashenadia over here. This settlement, we may choose to get rid of one day. We've been challenged to build five markets in our cities. We'll probably do that naturally over time. Now I could use this Orthodox missionary to generate crosses at the chapel here, and he would actually be better than a firebrand preacher until we get beyond a church, I think. Oh, and Peter Minowit just went, by the way. But I think with the crow having such high native conversion rate, it's going to be better to build missions. I could be entirely wrong though. Especially in the early game like this, but I do want to keep the crow happy with us. They're at plus five, which is pretty good. Alright, we have arrived. Let's sell our junk. Let's consider picking up our dudes right here. 
I'm thinking about whether or not I should equip them with anything. Having a pioneer get started wouldn't be a bad idea, but it depends on the land that we have. And I'm not sure I want to pay for a scout, but it's going to be a while before I can grow enough horses unless I get a rancher. Let's not bother equipping anything on them quite yet, I think. Sitting Bull wants a defensive pact. I'm not sure if we're going to do that, although he is...